if we look from the Russian point of view, they feel that NATO is coming too close to them and are going into their security belt and they want to um, to harm actually, or not to harm, to ha harm is, 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 the, is the wrong word, but to intrude in the, in, in the Russian sphere of interest, which Russia doesn't want to tolerate. One has to know Russia is a huge country with huge borders, so they were always afraid of foreigners invading. There's an, another um, issue which is very difficult for Russia to digest, is the value-based approach Western governments have. They say, well, we have the values and actually they should be universal values and to be applied by everybody. And Russia doesn't want any intervention in the system they have. So this is the Russian point of view. And that's why Russia reacted so harshly on when first Georgia sort of opened more to the, to the West and then when Ukraine wanted to join the European Eastern Partnership, because there again they were afraid that NATO would then come in on the small way. This is the, this is the, the Russian point of view. Now, if we, if, if we look on, on, on the other side, Russia had a war in, in 2018 in, in, in Georgia. And, um, and the point of view was Russia wanted to bring by force Georgia in their sphere of interest. It was a similar uh, Western point of view on, on Ukraine. And there is also a certain valid thing, because I think also it should be respected that Ukraine and Georgia have a right of self-determination. Now, the right of self-determination was always problematic in international politics because there's also power politics. And big powers don't like another big power to build up bases or allies very close to them. And this uh, triggered, the, um, uh, triggered the problem. I would say there's a clear conflict uh, situation. Um, and there is a situation where we have already hybrid warfare. Hybrid war means um, cyber attacks, propaganda, economic sanctions, um, creating of, 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 of social unrest. This situation we have already, and I think it is, is very dangerous because such situations, and mostly if they are very strong words uttered, become or can become self-fulfilling and could bring us really into war. I think the Ukraine is not the reason for the conflict. The um, Ukraine is a symptom of the tensions. But it triggered, it, it, uh, Ukraine triggered the sanctions. I do not believe uh, very strongly in economic sanctions because they, 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 are, they rarely work. But the situation of Ukraine, and Ukraine is geographically uh, settled between Russia and, and, and the European Union. Ukraine needs trade with both sides. And Ukraine needs good relations uh, with, with both sides. And I think it will be a very strong challenge for Ukraine because finally Ukraine has to solve its problem by itself. Getting the economy right, getting the, the governance systems right. And if, if they get that right, I think they could, as also before Finland, for instance, did it, could have a very good position between the two blocks, is maybe the wrong word, but between the, the EU and Russia. What Russia does, and they do it now, so that it's not getting too pro-Western, they are helping to destabilize. This is the, the Western view. The Russian says that actually the, the West, by pushing too much for the Eastern partnership, uh, destabilized uh, Ukraine. Um, so there is a bit of truth on, 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 on both sides, but it's unfortunate what, what's happened. It's very unfortunate for, for Ukraine. And actually, a, such a situation does not justify military interventions. 
and occupying the Ukrainian territories. I think the Eurasian Union is something which is naturally happening because uh, countries have to work together, countries have to trade, countries have to do business uh, to, together. And if we look simply at the map, and there's one in the back of me, we can see that actually the world has two main continents. The one is the Eurasian African bloc, and the other ones are the Americas. And that you have to, to, to live together on this continent is, is necessary. The binding thing of the last hundred years was the, uh, the relationship between Europe and the US, which was also facilitated because the North Atlantic was easy, easy to, to, to navigate. And it was sometimes more difficult to go uh, to, um, to, to travel on land than, uh, than on sea. This is, this, is, this is now over. And I think always such blocks like the Eurasian Union are actually creating peace. There's also the, the, the Shanghai Convention, etc. Things are happening there. The Eurasian Union itself is, is actually pretty small yet because it is uh, Russia with a few smaller countries like Armenia and, uh, and the Central Asian countries. But I think Russia is decided to develop it and is also decided to have good uh, relationships with China, with India, sort of with the East. And I think it would only be in, in the interest of Europe also to open this, this part of the world for, for its trade. But what Europe must not forget in this thing, they need a very close relationship, a very good relationship with, with the US. The primary reason was that Russia is afraid of terrorism. And they prefer not to have terrorism in the country, but to, fa fa the, but to fight terrorists outside. So they were, con uh, they were concerned. Secondly, they have, um, uh, they have strategic interests in the Eastern Mediterranean and, and the Middle East. And the relationship between Russia and Syria was always good. And also Russia had always had a military port on the Syrian coast of the Mediterranean. But there was also a, a, a strategic interest. I think that this, this, these two were, were, the, were the main interests. Russia doesn't have a value-based approach. Russia has an interest-based approach. So they do not want to change regimes. They say if, if a country has accepted its regime, that's the issue of the country. So they will normally work together with, with, with the governments. And that's the big change between today's Russia and the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union wanted to have the world revolution and communism everywhere. Today's Russia, they play, uh, or they don't play the, the use of foreign politics as a tool to promote their national interests. He is, and um, he feels as a Russian, and he loves Russia. He's, he's, uh, he's, 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 a, he's a passionate uh, Russian. He is um, a, a, a patriot, and he also, I think, feels that he is the best man on the place to do what he thinks is right for Russia. I don't, I don't think he's a, he's a threat for Europe. And, I think what Europe has to find out, that Europe has to become st strong enough and self-confident enough not to see Mr. Putin as a threat.